The most common questions people ask about men's health are, how can I get bigger, can I get longer, is there a way to increase girth? These questions come up again and again, and it's no surprise, because body image, confidence, and sexuality are all deeply connected. Today, we're going to dig into these concerns and talk about what science actually says about pen, I'll lengthening treatments, what works, what doesn't, and what's downright dangerous. Let's start with how common these worries are. A massive survey of 50 zero, zero, zero heterosexual men found that more than half 55 percent were unhappy with the way their penis looked. That's a huge number. But here's the twist. When researchers asked their female partners, 85% of women said they were perfectly satisfied with the size and appearance of their partner's genitals. This gap tells us something important. Most of the stress around size comes from men's own perception, not from their partner's judgment. Still, what really matters isn't just what others think. It's how you feel about yourself when you look in the mirror. Part of the confusion comes from how distorted normal has become. Pornography and social media often showcase unrealistic bodies, leading many men to believe that average equals inadequate. But when we look at the actual science, the average pen aisle length is about 5. 2 inches 13. 2 cm. Normal is considered anything within about 2. 5 standard deviations of that, so there's a wide, natural range. Medically speaking, a penis is only considered abnormally small when it measures less than 2. 9 inches 7, 5 cm. That condition, called micropenis, affects only about 0. 14% of men worldwide, in other words, the overwhelming majority of men who are worried about being too small, are actually completely normal, but here's where it gets serious. Even though most men fall in the normal range, a significant number still struggle with overwhelming anxiety about size. This is sometimes called small penis anxiety, and it's a form of body dysmorphic disorder. It doesn't mean the penis is objectively small. It means the person is trapped in obsessive thoughts about it. For some, these thoughts can take up hours every single day. It interferes with work, relationships, intimacy, and mental health. In extreme cases, the distress can become so intense that men develop depression, withdraw from social life, or even experience suicidal thoughts. So this is not just a vanity issue. It's a real mental health concern that deserves attention. Unfortunately, when people look for answers online, they're often met with false promises. If you type how to make my penis longer into Google, you'll be bombarded with pills, creams, surgeries, and miracle gadgets, most of which are scams. Some men even spend thousands traveling abroad to unlicensed clinics or underground providers, only to end up with botched results, permanent injuries, or lifelong complications. That's why it's so important to separate science from hype. Medical experts, including the Sexual Medicine Society of North America, make it clear, pen, Aisle lengthening or girth enhancement procedures are not recommended for the general population. The only time these procedures are considered appropriate is in men with true micropenis. For everyone else, they are considered experimental, risky, and often ineffective. So, what actually exists in the medical literature? Treatments generally fall into two categories, non-surgical and surgical. Non-surgical options. The very first step isn't a device or a pillets counseling. Psychological therapy has been shown to be incredibly effective for men who feel anxious about size. In fact, research shows that when men go through counseling and learn about what's normal, the majority no longer seek further treatments. Just understanding your body and reshaping your perception can dramatically reduce the distress. Beyond counseling, there are three main non-surgical approaches, penile extenders, vacuum erection devices, and injectable treatments. Out of these, only penile extenders have reliable evidence that they work. These devices use gentle, 
consistent traction to slowly stretch the penis over many months. Studies show that men who dedicate several hours a day to wearing these devices can gain around 2 cm in length. It's not dramatic, but it's real. The downside, it requires enormous patience and discipline, and side effects like numbness or bruising are possible. Vacuum erection devices, on the other hand, may help with erections but don't increase length. As for injections, whether fat, fillers, or other substances, the risks far outweigh the benefits. Injections can cause scarring, deformities, pain, or even long-term complications decades later. Some men who underwent these injections ended up with severe damage that couldn't be reversed. Surgical options. Now, let's talk about surgery. One of the most common procedures is cutting the suspensory ligament that attaches the penis to the pubic bone. This can create the appearance of more length, especially when flaccid. But the tray, off is big, stability during erections is reduced, satisfaction rates are low, and complications are frequent. Other experimental surgeries involve grafts, flaps, or even rib cartilage to add size, but results have been inconsistent and often come with major downsides. At this stage, the medical consensus is that surgery for lengthening should only happen in the context of a clinical trial. Clinical trials are carefully monitored by an ethics board, which ensures the procedures are safe, complications are reported, and results are studied properly. Without that kind of oversight, the risks far outweigh the benefits. So what's the bottom line? You can't radically change your size. Traction devices may give you a small, real increase, but it's modest and requires dedication. Surgery is not safe or reliable outside of a research setting. Most other methods are ineffective, experimental, or harmful. The best first step is addressing the anxiety itself. For many men, therapy not only helps reduce obsessive thoughts, but also improves confidence and satisfaction in their relationships. After all, size alone doesn't determine sexual pleasure or intimacy. Communication, confidence, and connection matter far more. So before you chase dangerous promises or irreversible procedures, take a step back. Get the facts, talk to a professional, and remember, you are so much more than a number. Your worth, your masculinity, and your relationships are not defined by a ruler.